Right you guys, got another product sent over by Banggood. This is the Sonovo Mini PC Windows 10 Intel X5Z8350 quad core processor with Ethernet and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and four USB ports. One of those is USB 3.0. Now this is a very powerful mini PC. It's more than a TV box, it's actually a mini computer. And you can see here, this one has four gigabytes of DDR3 1066 megahertz memory and 64 gigabytes of ROM, which is your storage. Now this version here also comes with all this stuff inside the box, which is your power brick to actually power the unit. Now, sadly, this is a two pin uh, version here they've sent me. Uh, but it's okay, you can still use it, and they do send you a little extension plug. But you can see the power jack there at the end, and an LED light which lights up blue uh, to tell you the power unit is on. And you get sent one of these little plugs here uh, to power the unit. But you can purchase these things, which I've also got, which I use to convert it into a 3-pin plug permanently. And also inside here, you're going to get your HDMI cable. Now, this is not just one of those small, short HDMI cables. This is a pretty chunky, well-built HDMI cable. Uh, say a good uh, meter, meter and a half in length. Now, also, you can see you're going to get your specifications here. You can pause the screen at this stage. It gives you all the media uh, files that it will play. Also comes with a uh, micro SD card uh, slot in there for extra storage. You can also plug in uh, the external hard drives. It's the Cherry Trail Z8350 quad core processor on this one. Now again, because it's a PC, you can plug in any type of device to this unit and it will act just like a computer because that's what it is. You can see it supports 4K and 2K content, which will stream some content down or play some content a little bit later on so you can see. But you can plug just about anything in like a router, a monitor, you can see here, webcam, mobile phone, tablet, keyboard, mouse, any of that stuff, it will work just fine. You also have your warranty card inside here as well. This is for your actual device. Now the device itself is pretty well built and we're gonna take a look at that because we're gonna take it apart to have a look at the quality. It's passi passively cooled, which means it uses aluminum to cool down the CPU and GPU. You can see here we have the LED light, which blue, uh, lights up blue for show there's power to the unit. You've got your power button here two USB 2.0 ports on this side. Now on most units, that will be it. You wouldn't get no more, but on here you get a lot more. So you get in your headphone jack here, uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack, you get in your ethernet ports here. Also you're getting Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this device as well. You get in your HDMI ports on here as well. And also you're getting your micro USB ports as well, which is a nice little touch. It's amazing what they cram into these little uh, devices here. You're getting your power port there and another two USB ports. One is a USB 2.0 port and also you're getting your super fast USB 3.0 port on there and you're getting your micro SD card slot which is going to be used for more storage. You can also use the USB ports for external storage like a, um, a external drive or something like that, you know. On the bottom, you're getting some cooling area here and some anti-slip rubber feet, which is where you can part and take a look inside, because I think that's important to know how good the quality of about £100 on the unit. So let's remove these little rubber feet here, and uh, we can then take a look at the actual device when we unscrew it. Now, I've also got a nice little screw set here, which you might be interested in, and I'll leave the link in the description for you for that one. If you're taking a Part, tablets, mobile phones and stuff like that. This is a pretty decent bit of kit. Um, you can see it's similar to the iFixy type kit but this is a lot more cheaper but the build quality of it is very good also and we'll take a look at that in more detail uh, when we get to use it. But you can see here they're all uh, listed here as well which is a really nice touch so you can just pull out any type of screw head do you want and uh, use your little uh, screw part which comes with it as well which is made of aluminium and uh, you can see they're all listed here and pretty much that will cover just about any type of screw head that you're going to come up against. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave the uh, link in the description of the video for you. Anyway, let's get back to the review. So I'm just going to pull out one of these screw heads here and remove these screws. Now, I don't normally spend so much time tearing down a unit, but I wanted to see what it was like inside and see what the build quality was like. 
and I was pleasantly surprised that it was pretty decent build quality for a hundred pound uh, unit and it really is decent so I'm going to remove these four screws here now I wouldn't advise you to take it apart you have no need to do this but I'm doing it just because it's a tutorial and I want to show you what's inside because you're the one that's going to be spending your hard-earned cash so let's uh, have a look inside here so once I remove this final screw we can then remove the bottom uh, plate here now again this unit will get warm and the reason why it will get warm is because it's passively cooled there is no fan cooling inside here okay but aluminium is probably one of the best uh, coolants there is on the market it's better than copper and it should cool this unit down just fine and I was using it for a good few hours and I had no problems with it whatsoever so let me just strip these four screws off so we can remove the main board and you can see that big chunk of aluminium on the black part there on the bottom and also on the motherboard as well there's a big chunk of aluminium and that's going to dissipate the heat very easily and you can see it's very well built it's all on the uh, surface mounted them uh, types of uh, USB ports and everything everything is on the board now I think they were on ribbons and on little separate boards before but now everything has been put onto the actual board itself so let's boot this system up and have a look and see what it looks like and you can see here they've used Sonovo, uh, which is very similar to Lenovo uh, as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure they knew that when they were doing it. So we'll get to the uh, log on screen. Now, another thing I see on some other YouTube channels, they were saying that this unit was really bad and, and it was really slow and the CPU was maxed out all the time. Well, if you do a bit of investigation, you'll understand that this unit needed to be updated uh, windows you can see the CPU is high and also the disk is very high and that's blown for about an hour and uh, reboot the system and it was perfectly fine I was getting no CPU usage and disk everything dropped down to normal so if you do get that problem when you first buy it then be patient and let it update okay guys because it is a Windows operating system and it will need to update so this I've just dropped Cody on here a little Cody build just to show you that um, it does work with Cody very well. Again, this is more than a TV box, guys. I think it's more of a piece, mini PC uh, type of uh, unit, really. So if you want to run this sort of stuff. But you can see it's loading these files in fine. And uh, again, this has just been installed, so it's still updating uh, the actual uh, Cody as well. So it will be a little bit sluggish, but it's perfectly fine once it gets stable, as you can see here. And you've got all your movies, TV shows, kids shows. Uh, sports and everything like that so I'm just gonna quickly I've just installed it literally uh, as we speak so as you can see here very nice um, build this one I like the look of it quite a lot and I tend to go for a more clean build and just install what I need to install but you can see here you've got music kids shows TV shows just about everything here and, it, and this is you see the little flicker there that's because it's downloading those off the internet so it needs to get them in its cache and then once it's in there it won't need to download them anymore and that will be fine and you can see that work fine I'm not going to be streaming any of that stuff so we can see the supported decoded formats that it uh, uses also pictures and videos that the formats it supports so we're just going to play this one this is h264 uh, 40 megabits per second you can see these are high um, high co uh, coded uh, type files which will really stress the unit to see whether it uh, works properly and you can see here it's working really seamlessly let's try 120 megabits per second 4k ultra hd h264 and see how that plays now this is a pretty uh, hefty bit of kit you can see and it's running this very smoothly indeed no problems at all so you're going to get all your 4k content and a good thing is here guys when you go on youtube it does show uh, 4K content and you can display and download that as long as you've got the internet speed for that. And again, this comes with Wi-Fi and uh, Ethernet as well and it works pretty fine. So again, let's take a look at this one. This is another one that people like to see, which is the 60, uh, 60 frames per second. And you can see that's pretty smooth as well. But pretty much that's smooth and watchable as you can see. So again, you can see there guys, it does pretty well at that sort of stuff. And uh, what we're gonna do here is run some other tests. I can run uh, CPU Z, 
and uh, we can do Geekbench as well, if just in case you're interested in those. I know some people are, and they'd like to see this stuff. So I'll quickly run CPU Z so you can see all the information about the CPU, the RAM, and uh, the chip on the board and everything else. So you can see everything there. And you can pause the screen if you need to read all that stuff. I'm not going to go for it, but you can see it's the Atom uh, X5, the uh, Z8350, 1.4 four gigahertz but that will ramp up to 1.84 gigahertz when it needs to okay guys so pretty much uh, you're going to have everything you need there here's your memory as well uh, 40 uh, 26 um, memory ddr3 1066 megahertz is your graphics and we'll just go through some of these and then what i'll do is i'll run uh, geekbench for you just to show you the geekbench scores just in case you're interested in those but all in all, I'm pretty impressed with it as well. And we did play some games on it and not just these small little standard games like Angry Birds and stuff like that. This can handle some pretty hefty games as well. So uh, you'll see that footage in a second. So watch the whole video. Again, we're going to run the complete bench here, uh, benchmark, and then we'll do the CPU benchmark as well. I'll speed this process up so it doesn't bore you too much. So 4,970. Pretty nice score and then we're going to move on to the next one which was the CPU uh, benchmark as well we'll just run that as well and uh, let that speed this process up and again I'm pretty impressed with the actual unit itself handled everything I chucked in you can see the uh, 772 and also 2003 and that's one process on four cores for the Cherry Trail uh, CPU, pretty decent. And again, for hundred pounds, around about hundred pounds, you're gonna get yourself a little mini PC that does pretty much everything and more than just uh, streaming content. And here is some gameplay of uh, World of Tanks. As you can see, this was a pretty hefty download. This is about five gigs to download. But as you can see here, handled this with ease, no problem at all. And I had this unit running for a good few hours, guys. There was no problems at all uh, with running this. I had it running for about four or five hours at one time. There was no overheating issues or nothing like that. It was working just fine. And you can see gameplay playing World of Tanks on there. And it will probably handle other games as well. But that's the one I could just get off the internet at the time. So what do I think of it? Well, I think it's a pretty piece of, decent bit of kit um, for the money. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you guys are looking for, whether you're looking for a TV box or whether you're looking for a mini PC. I pitched this at the more the mini PC market, and I think it's a pretty decent buy for the money. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I want to thank, thank uh, Banggood for sending this one out for review. Have a great weekend, guys, and I shall see you again for another video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.